Hello, students. Good Thursday morning to you. I hope you guys are ready to learn some math today. Um, first of all, uh, you do owe me homework, so please pass that in while I'm talking right now. You do owe me homework. You might not have finished it. You did not have to finish it, but I did say yesterday, yesterday I want you to turn in what you did do, and I will give you an automatic 100 since you did not have to finish it, but I still want you to turn it in. And then those that finish the assignment, be sure and give yourself two bonus points in your bonus point account. We will have a quiz tomorrow. We will do nothing Friday except have a quiz. So quiz on Friday and that's all you'll have is a quiz so tonight I need you to do your homework that I'm going to give you today and then study for your quiz come in tomorrow nail your quiz do really well <coughs> excuse me and then you're free for the weekend not to have any homework okay let's talk about what's going to be on the quiz so I'm going to pause a second while you um, get out something to write down this information about your quiz you will be watching YouTube probably a little bit tonight to help you get ready for the quiz so here we go. Um, grab your pencils and here's what's going to be on the quiz on tomorrow. First of all, remember, I'm just reading off of the screen here in front of you. Remember the first part of class on Tuesday? We reviewed everything we have covered so far in Chapter 10. Remember I said, guys, let's do a quick two-minute review. It ended up being about eight minutes. Um, the name of that video that you watched was Berean Academy Geometry 10-4. So you can look that up on YouTube and just watch the first, I don't know, six, eight, nine minutes of that video, and it covers all of the problems that we had done up until Tuesday from the whole chapter. Any of those problems on the review on that video, so again, go to YouTube, look at Brian Academy Geometry 10-4. Any of those problems on the first, during that review session are fair game for the quiz. Know those. All right, here's what else is on the quiz. If I'm going too fast, pause the video and write this down. Also, anything on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's homework is fair game. Let me read that again to you right there in front of you on the screen. Anything on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's homework is fair game. And when I say Thursday's homework, let me put beneath that in parentheses. That means tonight's homework. So you've not had that video yet, all right? Um, so here we go. What videos would you want to watch? Um, well, first of all, Tuesday's homework video is bag. If you write that down, bag 10 dash for homework. Wednesday's video was bag 10 dash for part two homework. And tonight's homework will be bag 10 dash five homework. Of course, Brian Academy Geometry. So uh, I'm going to wait a second while you copy that down. And again, that's just the homework. You don't have, you're like, Mr. Earhart, that's like two hours of videos we got to watch tonight. No, no, no. I'm just saying, I'm saying, Watch the first eight to ten minutes of this video right here that I'm circling with my pen right now, okay? And that'll show you most of the problems or a lot that will be on the quiz. And then if you want to study any homework, you can just turn to that video and the homework's on that video. You can kind of look and see if you need to, to practice any of those problems. I'm not saying you have to watch the whole video. Just look at that homework assignment. You'll find it on that video. The very first page of the video shows you the homework assignment for those days. And of course, I'll give you Thursday night's homework here in a little bit. So that's what's going to be on the quiz. You got to know it, learn it, love it. It's very important you do well on this quiz. All right. This is a huge part of what's going to be on your test probably next week. All right. Let's continue on. Um, again, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video. All right. We are looking today. Grab your notebooks, please. We are going to go a little fast because I want to give you plenty of time in class to work on your homework, seeing that you really need to study for your uh, your quiz tomorrow. So grab your pens and notebooks. We are looking at sine, cosine, the sine and cosine ratios. We've already learned the tangent ratio. Now we're going to add two more trig ratios. So today we're going to look at sine and cosine ratios, lesson 10-5, and the date today is the second. The date is the second. Okay, we have been looking at the tangent ratio. Today, we will be expanding our knowledge of trig ratios. Today, we will be looking at sine and cosine ratios. Remember, sine, cosine, and tangent can only be used on right triangles. Don't forget this. You cannot use sine, cosine, and tangent on an oblique triangle. It has to be a right triangle. Okay? Alright, let's continue on. 
Here are the three trig ratios. Now you'll want to write that down. These last couple sentences, I was just kind of reading off of the screen and reviewing whether you wrote down or not was up to you. This is important. Write this down. Here are the three trig ratios that you need to know. Here's the first one. When I ask you to find, write this down, when I ask you to find the sine of an angle like sine of x, the ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. Please write that down. Opposite over hypotenuse. So when I ask you to find the sine of an angle, it's opposite over hypotenuse. The next trig ratio or trig function is cosine of angle x equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So when you're asked to find the cosine of an angle, you use the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. And the last one you already know, tangent of angle x equals opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Now, <coughs> I want to show you a really neat way to remember this. We're dealing with sine right here, so we put an S. And then what's up top? Opposite. So I put a, oh, you might want to write this down, it's very helpful. And then hypotenuse is in the bottom, so I put H. S-O-H. S-O-H. Over here I would put C-A-H. C-A-H. Over here I would put T-O-A. T-O-A. And then it's really easy to remember. We call this long O, so, short A, ka, soka, toa, okay? Soka, toa. And that's a really easy way to remember these trig functions up here. Sign is, not sure why my eraser is not working. There we go. Didn't want to do that. There we go. Um, this is a very easy way to remember that sign, look right here, follow my, follow my, little eraser here, sine is <laughs> sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's a really helpful way to remember these. Long O, so, ka, short A, ka, so, ka, toa. Okay, let's continue on. So we're going to use these three formulas today over and over and over. All right, so with that in mind, um, let me go ahead and scoot forward here. Actually, you know what I need to do real quick? If you'll be patient with me and let me just, I'm not going to be able to do that, am I? That's really too bad. Um, I'm going to go back here and give me just a second, students, to do something I feel would be very helpful. If I can very quickly cut and paste these, then we can use them throughout the rest of the class period. So there we go. All right. All right, there we go. All right, so using these three formulas you should have in your notes, let's go ahead and try a couple problems. Let's do three triangles, and then we're going to give you some to use with your calculator, and then we'll be done for the class period, okay? Um, so here we go. Let's go ahead and let's find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. All right, so I've taught you to go ahead and take your pencil. We're dealing with angle A, so put your pencil on angle A and go straight across to the opposite side. And we're going to call this side the opposite side. Now here's the right angle, so we know this is my hypotenuse. And the only side left is my 9, so that's going to be my adjacent. See how easy that is? So let's find the sine of angle A. Well, the sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse. Write that down. So the sine of angle A would be opposite, that's 40, over the hypotenuse, 41. There it is, piece of cake. Now, if I asked you to write it in decimal form, then you simply take 40 and divide it by 41, and you would get 0.9756. Okay, cosine of angle A. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent is 41 hypotenuse, no that's wrong, I'm sorry, I apologize, adjacent would be 9, so we put a 9 up top, hypotenuse is 41, 9 over 41, there's your answer. Now if I asked you to type that in decimal form, it would be 0 .2195, 0 .2195, with your calculator you simply type 9 divided by 41, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so opposite would be 40, adjacent would be 9, you cannot reduce that, so we simply type in 40 divided by 9, 
and we get out 4.4 repeating, 4.444. All right, so there we go. We found the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. Now, let's come up here. I'm going to cross these sides off because now we're going to deal with what? Angle B. Angle B. So all the names of these sides could change. So now we're going to deal with angle B. So put your pencil on angle B. Go straight across. So this is going to be my opposite side. Of course, the hypotenuse stays the hypotenuse. I really did not have to cross that off. And the other side is my adjacent side. There we go. So how do you find the sine of B? Opposite over hypotenuse which would be opposite is 9, hypotenuse is 41. So 9 over 41 is your answer. And if uh, we asked you to write that in decimal form, it would be 0.2195. Now the cosine of B, well, that would be cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent would be 40, hypotenuse is 41. So 40 over 41, which would be the same thing as 0.9756. And then tangent of B, well, that would be opposite over adjacent. My opposite side is 9. My adjacent side is 40, 9 over 40. And so we would have, let's see, 0 0.225, 0.225. All right, not too bad. Let's try a couple more of these, and we're finished for the class period, except for a couple calculator problems. Okay, here's the right triangle. Go ahead and write this in your notes, please. Go ahead and copy this in your notes. Triangle ABC, one leg is square root of 2, another leg is square root of 2, and your hypotenuse is 2. Okay, let's start off with angle A, the sine of A. So you put your pencil on A, you go straight across, and we'll call this the opposite side. And then, of course, 2 is your hypotenuse. It's right across from the, r the right angle. And the only, only other side left is this side here, so we'll call that adjacent. Let's go a little faster. How do you find the sine of an angle? opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is square root of 2. Hypotenuse is 2. So you're welcome to leave it like that. Now a decimal would be square root of 2 equals and then divided by 2 equals. And you should get this if you're typing it incorrectly. You might want to practice 0.7071. Alright. Okay. Cosine of A is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent would be square root of 2 hypotenuse would be 2. It's the exact same fraction as up here. So if I asked you to write your answer as fractions, you'd be done with these. But if I ask you to write it as a decimal, type it into your calculator and come out with this decimal. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, so we're looking at square root of 2 over square root of 2. Square root of 2 over square root of 2, which would just be 1 if you reduce that fraction. Anything over itself in a fraction is just 1. So the answer is 1. Well, let's try Let's try the sine of B and the cosine and tangent of B. Now, hypotenuse stays hypotenuse. But I'm going to cross off these two sides here. Now we're dealing with angle B. Everybody see that? Angle B. So I'm going to put my pencil on B. Go straight across. This would be opposite. And my other side here has to be my adjacent side. So sine of B. How do I find the sine of an angle? Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is square root of 2. Hypotenuse is 2. So there's my answer. Or I can put 0 0.7071. How do I find the cosine of B? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And of course that would be uh, square root of 2 over 2 which would be 0 0.7071. You can see you're going to have a bunch of similar answers when you have two legs that are the same like we do here. And how do you find the tangent of B? Well, TOA, opposite over adjacent, and that would be square root of 2 over square root of 2, which is 1. All right, let's try one more. I'll go really fast down on the last one in case I'm boring you a little bit and we'll be finished, okay? All right, here we go. Um... I'm not sure why I didn't cut and paste this before I was going to, so there it is. Nothing like doing it at the end. Okay, here we go. Sine of A. Well, we're dealing with angle A for all of these, so put your pen on pencil on A. Go straight across. This would be your opposite side. 8 is obviously your hypotenuse, and 5 would be your adjacent side. So here we go. Sine of A. How do you find the sine of A? Well, it's right up here in front of you, opposite over hypotenuse. And so opposite would be square root of 39, and hypotenuse is 8. So there's your answer. Now, if I wanted that in decimal form, you would type in square root of 39 equals, 
and then divide it by 8 equals and you should get 0.7806. All right, cosine of angle A, that would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 5 over square root of 39. No, I'm sorry, 5 over 8, excuse me. Adjacent is 5, hypotenuse is 8, so 5 eighths. And then the decimal form would be 0.625. The tangent of A would be opposite over adjacent. So square root of 39 over 5. And that would be your answer if you left it in fraction form. If I wanted it in the decimal, it would be 1.2490. 1 1.2490. All right, let's deal with angle B now. Angle B. Let's find the cosine of angle B. Well, first of all, let's come up here and let's cross off the names of these sides. We're dealing with angle B, so put your pencil on B, go straight across to 5. This is your opposite side. So this side up here must be your adjacent side. Cosine of, or sine of B is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be 5 over 8, which would be 0.625. And then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be square root of 39 is your adjacent side over 8, which is your hypotenuse and your decimal would be 0 0.7806 and then tangent of B is opposite over adjacent which would be uh, 5 over square root of 39 and if you type that into your calculator calculator you will get 0 0.8006 0 0.8006 so there you go we have really tackled this pretty nicely um, we now know how to find the sine or cosine or tangent of a given angle as long as you're able as long as you remember to put your pencil on that angle label all the sides correctly and then use your formulas opposite over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over adjacent don't forget so katoa alright let's practice some now with our calculator and then I'll let you get started on your homework alright Go ahead and grab your calculators, please. What if I don't give you a triangle? Now go ahead and pause now while I'm talking. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, it's very important. All right. Um, what if I did not give you a triangle? I just said find the sine of 43. Well, you can type that into your calculator, and here's what you'll get. 0 0.6820 if you round to four decimal places. 0 0.6820. So test that, and we're moving on. 0.6820. Okay. All right. Next problem. How about the cosine of 43? If I go too fast, just pause the video. Cosine of 43. Well, we don't have a triangle, so we're going to type that into our calculator. You get 0 0.7314. 0 0.7314. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. How about sine of 15? Sine of 15. Well, sine of 15 is 0.258. Eight. So check your work. Make sure you know how to type that in. 0.2588 sine of 15. And how about the cosine of 15? Type that into your calculator. Make sure you know how to do that. You should get out 0 0.9659. 0 0.9659. Okay? Cosine of 15. All right. Two more and we're finished. Sine of 72. Sine of 72. Please type that into your calculator. You should get out 0.9511. 0.9511 that's the sine of 72 if we don't have a triangle to use the trig ratios then we're going to have to use our calculators and then cosine of 72 cosine of 72 would be 0.3090 all right so there you go students i hope you're getting this i know the video is not very long it's actually pretty short but that's okay go ahead and pull this video up if the teacher will let you brian academy geometry 10-5 homework all right and you'll find there um, the problems worked out for you okay and it sounds kind of long but a good portion of that are just the calculator problems that you type into your calculator so it's not um, tremendously difficult okay have a great rest of the day please study for your quiz tonight let me go way back up to the very first page well kind of the first page right here Remember, Berean Academy Geometry 10-4. Watch the first about 10 minutes of that video, okay? And it, it reviews 
a good portion of the chapter and then make sure you're familiar with these three homework assignments Tuesdays Wednesdays and then tonight's so if you've been staying up on this like you're supposed to you're gonna be fine if not then there could be some problems for you okay quiz tomorrow nothing else have a good day